Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Art Matters, um, where we are talking about why art is important to everyday life and how artists are making real impacts in our communities. Um, I am Marjorie Rawl. I am the Tirana Assistant Curator at the Fitchburg Art Museum, and I am so thrilled today to be joined by Eugene Finney. Eugene, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Eugene Finney. Uh, I've been uh, practicing in the arts for over 35 years. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've had a focus in galleries, museums, and private collections. I have a BFA in drawing and painting from Long Beach State University and an MFA in interdisciplinary studio practice from Tufts University. I'm a two-time resident of an artist residency program at the Academia in Florence. Um, I also founded two art spaces, uh, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast. I've taught at the MFA in Mass Art. I've worked at uh, the De Cordova, the Boston Center for the Arts, the Courier Museum, and now I'm um, here in Fitchburg again. So Awesome, thank you. And that sort of parlays into my first question, which is, you know, what's your connection to Fitchburg? You just gave us that um, really extensive bio. You've been all over. Um, what is your sort of tie to Fitchburg and what brought you back to the city where you are located now? Um, well, in 2014, I had the incredible opportunity to, to work at the Fitchburg Art Museum. Uh, Nick Capasso had recently become the director uh, and an opportunity presented itself. So I came on as director of marketing and community relations um, and also had a heavy hand in uh, exhibitions, preparator roles. While I was there, we were also uh, in the midst of a major renovation across the museum, both uh, the exterior and all of the galleries. So it was a very exciting time to be there. Kind of the highlights of my time there were really the work that we did with the community partners in the early stages of trying to develop a cultural district uh, in the downtown area, and also uh, the advocacy and political work that we did with Mass Creative. So that was what brought me to Fitchburg, and I instantly saw that Fitchburg was very ripe with opportunity, that there were a lot of people here who had a lot of great ideas. And in the role I was at at the museum, I got to really connect and work with those people. So after a couple of years of that, though, I had an opportunity to um, go work with another art collection. And so that took me away from Fitchburg for a couple of years. Uh, and as that project kind of wound down and I was able to kind of remote control it a little bit more, um, and I was spending time at my company's campuses in New England, I realized that Fitchburg was actually geographically located right in the center of those three places. It was also uh, a way for me to um, get studio space back into my life uh, with the affordability that Fitchburg has to offer. Um, so it made sense to me when I had the opportunity to come back. And when I came back, it was so incredible to see all the strides everyone had taken on uh, the different organizations, how the needle had really been pushed on a lot of the initiatives that had been talked about and, and just started uh, when I had my previous tenure at the museum. Yeah, um, that's great. I think you're totally right when in saying that, you know, things are being put, the needle is being pushed forward and that sort of touches on my second question, which was about um, why you think the arts are so central in Fitchburg. We're having all these conversations about why art is important and it's the role it can play in communities. And I wonder if you had any thoughts on why in Fitchburg in particular, it seems to have really taken root um, and is changing what the city looks like, what it feels like. Um, and if you have any thoughts on why that is or what about Fitchburg in particular is really like allowing that. Well, I, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, art has been woven into the community for over a hundred of hundred years in different ways. And, you know, we, we really have Eleanor Norcross to thank for that. Though we've, you know, we're a smaller city, if you will. Um, we've had an incredible venue to see incredible works of art for years. Um, and so I think that that's kind of bred into the community um, that, that art is a critical thing to have. Um, that, that we need to continue to have access to it. And I think now as there's been tremendous shifts within the community and with development and, and how we're looking at downtown, 
the arts over the years have provided so many fantastic models of revitalization and engagement and community building. And under Nick's leadership, the museum has helped open the eyes to the community about some of those different models. And with a lot of the other advocacy and uh, partnership work from within the community, there's buy-in and there's understanding that the creative community um, is a real thing um, and that it's something that gives you kind of these intangible variables. Um, and they're, they're always these wonderful uh, elements that, that you're able to include. And, and you, know, you can't always predict, but um, there's those wonderful discoveries that come from creativity. And I, I think the city understands that moving forward, they need to find ways of looking differently and approaching things differently. And Fitchburg on a whole, um, embraces that concept of innovation in such a significant way. Yeah, and you make a good point. You know, people are sort of coming around to the idea that the arts and the creative community is a real thing. And um, you mentioned intangible, you know, value, but there's also a lot of tangible value, right? In terms of like economic return on investing in art and public art and, you know, different, um, there's a lot of awesome murals in the city. And so I wonder if you have thoughts on, you know, the really robust creative economy that's going on in Fitchburg and maybe your role in it. And we can talk about some of your um, specific projects in a minute, but just thinking about how art can actually have a physical impact on a community. Um, well, I mean, obviously it's impact on the community is, is essentially and initially going to be visual. Visual engagement is in my mind, you know, the quickest way to, you know, engaging somebody on an intellectual level, you know, nearly 85% of our sensory intake comes from the sense of sight. So um, it's a really great way to reach an audience and to share an idea. Um, you know, the, the, the bright colors and, and having art in public, you know, it definitely beautifies. Um, it definitely um, sends a message mm -hmm. um, that, you know, the city believes in that, um, which is important for the, the community at large to know, mm -hmm. um, because in reality, art is still part, is, is not accessed by the entire population. Um, and, and we're always trying to like grow that audience and make it more accessible. Yeah. Um, and so speaking of public art, and you just mentioned, you know, why it's important and why it plays um, a big role in Fitchburg in particular. Um, I wanted to ask about what your latest project has been. Um, and um, if you could just tell us a little bit about what you've been working on. Yeah, well, the um, the most recent major project that I worked on um, was a project called Break the Pattern. Um, and it's um, a large scale painting that was installed on the Mill Street Corridor. Um, it was sponsored by Reimagine North of Maine. Um, and they asked me to um, lead a team of artists to create an artwork to be installed on the boarded up windows of the, the tallest building there on the block. It, it was a little bit unexpected um, because initially I'd been working with Reimagine on another initiative um, which I'm hoping we can get back to at some point um, within the community. But it was it was really a situation where, um, you know, th there's there's constraints and things need to get accomplished, and you know there's timelines and um, you know being in the arts and working in the nonprofits for so long, I completely understand that and wanted to do everything I could do, you know, to be the best partner. Um, that I could be, um, even though I knew that it was it was somewhat of a monumental task to take on, um, given the what the conditions were going to be and the time frame um, and and you know the, the time of year, for instance, and so forth. But it turned out to be one of the most incredible and enriching experiences of my creative journey throughout the years, um, and that's one of the you know, really incredible things when you remain open to to the what ifs. And and that was kind of the the situation that was presented around creating this artwork was a lot of a lot of what ifs. It was, 
well, what, what if, what if we have Eugene do this? And um, well, what if we have Eugene work with a team of artists and, and what if we have the design come from the team and, and how does all that work? You know, it's, it was a fantastic exercise in um, the boundaries and constraints of collaboration between artists, which, um, you know, at sometimes can be difficult and sometimes be very smooth. Um, it requires a great amount of trust and understanding that you're all working towards a common goal. And in this case, it was really understanding that our common goal was to do something for our community that was going to make an impact, that was going to bring something of beauty, that was going to stimulate people visually, that was going to, you know, help achieve the next goal of a, a ongoing initiative within the city that was supporting the cultural community. And so with, with that in mind, um, you know, I got to work with Justin Tarbell and Thomas Moser and have some really incredible times in the studio, have all those conversations about art and, and connections. And it was three artists who had never worked together before who just kind of jumped in unknowingly, but, but completely willing to leave all of, you know, their past processes behind and be open to whatever came out of the conversations and, and the dialogue and um, that in itself, you know, I thought really embodied the spirit of Fitchburg. Um, and so I was really proud to be able to work with Justin and Thomas in that type of setting. And it was really fun to make that painting. It, you know, it's one of the largest paintings I've ever worked on. Um, it is in public view. You know, now that it's been up a few months and to, you know, hear feedback and, and you know, people are appreciative of it. And, you know, maybe they're like, hey, what, what is that? But that looks cool. You know, that that's good. Um, because we really wanted to make something that, that looked different, um, that, that wasn't a traditional, you know, public mural in the sense of, you know, being extremely pictorial or, or historical reference. We wanted it to, you know, definitely rely on conceptual elements and, and the formal elements. And we wanted it to create different um, viewer experiences, depending on where you see it, mm -hmm. um, whether you're coming down the hill on South Street, whether you're down, on Mill Street itself, or if you're up in the parking plaza, there, there's different types of viewing experiences. Um, and that that was one of our main goals. Um, and that was something that, that had been kind of laid out as one of our design parameters from the beginning. The, the design came from Justin Tarbell uh, that we went with, the design and the design concept, uh, Break the Pattern. Um, and, and Justin was really on point about hitting all of those marks um, and, and also very much in a logistical standpoint, like understanding, like the task at hand, the physicality of it, like, and the parameters and the time and the process that was presented by the way we completed the painting would allow us like maximum efficiencies in terms of, of, you know, literally paint drying, um, you know, making making the painting in an indoor space in the winter when it's very cold mm -hmm. um with you know with space heaters you know you know was something we had to factor in um of you know how can we actually like fabricate this artwork in that amount of time mm -hmm. so you know the entire process we were faced with all of these fantastic creative challenges um you know and um you know, Justin and Thomas just just really embraced that. And, you know, I'm proud of the work that we did together. And um, I hope the city thoroughly enjoys it. Um, and, you know, I look, I look forward to, you know, the, the next big type of public project. And especially I look forward to seeing what happens with the Mill Street Corridor next. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's really set up in a place, um, to, you know, to really be something. Um, and now with, you know, things kind of loosening up in terms of the pandemic, um, you know, maybe we can start thinking about, you know, public programming and, and events down in that space. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, and I like the way you talk about it as a sort of how you guys thought about it as being a little bit different. We see a lot of murals 
and a lot of sculpture, public sculpture um, in Fitchburg. And I wondered about the concept for displaying a painting in windows of this big building. Where did that come from? Was that always there from the beginning or was that something you guys had to think through in terms of the location and the, the type of work you wanted in um, these empty window spaces? That's a fantastic question. I think I think that that is always part of the Mill Street program. I think that was always their phase two after they got the stage and the art in, as I understood it. I, I wouldn't necessarily say put the resources on boarding up an empty building. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you know, a significant visual indicator for for the for the environment um it it really kind of brings together the full vision um that had been designed for the space um so you know that that was kind of the ask mm -hmm. um you know my concerns is you know a lot of efforts in into something that is actually like temporary in nature Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, long-term maintenance, like, you know, th there's a difference in my mind between public artworks and art that's put in a public space. Mm. Um, and, you know, a, a public artwork takes into consideration, like, the long-term, um, care, um maintenance um upkeep um you know just in the materials themselves mm -hmm. um it usually requires like really specific installation for the long term right. um whereas with the project we just completed i feel that that is more of an artwork in a public space um due to its temporary nature um its materials and its makeup are designed to last as long as possible but again this was an artwork designed to um battle blight in downtown in the cultural corridor by boarding up the windows of a uh somewhat abandoned building um while it um does a fantastic job of you know completing the vision of the second phase of the mill street corridor um and bringing a lot of uh visual attention um, and visual stimulus to the area, it still is temporary in nature. Um, and projects like that will have concern about who's going to take care of it in the long run, um, who's going to maintain it, um, and so forth. Whereas, um, again, the, the, the public artworks are in their initial concept intended to be in that type of environment. Um, rather than something that could be hanging on the wall in a gallery than then placed outside. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's an important thing to, th to, to keep in mind, um, especially as we move forward with, with artworks around Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and how long will this project be up? Is there an end date or is it kind of like you said, sort of as long as it lasts? That's a fantastic question. I hope the answer is that they're not up that long because mm. that would mean that the building is being developed um, and turned into use for the community. Mm -hmm. um, I do hope that um, as long as the building is in the condition, um, something is done to, to beautify the area. Um, if it turns into a scenario where, you know, these panels are, kind of seeing the end of their days, well, then it's certainly time for, you know, some more art to replace it if if that's the right solution at the time. Right. Awesome. Um, and my last question for you, Eugene, is um, sort of a personal question in, in that how would you like to see the arts community continue to expand and continue to grow in Fitchburg um, in the next couple of years and beyond? This is a really important question, you know, um, this is, I, I think, a question that a lot of people are looking to develop certain solutions for and avenues. Um, and some of the things that, you know, I would like to see are quite subjective. Um, mm -hmm. But 
what I'd like to share here is some things that I think could be very beneficial to the development of the creative community here. Um, you know, free painting studios for everyone in a building, you know, um, ideal, not exactly going to happen, but I know we've got some special things in the works. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I would really hope to see is the formation of critique groups within the local visual art scene mm -hmm. um, and having the conversation shift publicly from, hey, I have this idea, how can I do this to hey, what are the ideas driving your new work? Or like, how does your process relate to your practice? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really create a responsibility among the artists to be aware of their historical references and the accountability of their content um, and, and to really kind of towards more authentic and critical dialogue around art itself. Mm -hmm. um, and that in those, those conversations, you know, is, is where work is going to get pushed and where the ideas are going to get shared. And, you know, it's, it's ideas that start movements, mm -hmm. you know, not a, not a thing, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. So, um, so, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing that I'm really hoping will happen is that local artist groups will really focus their energy and attention and resources on producing exhibitions and exhibition opportunities for the local arts community. Um, you know, that throughout history has been one of the greatest uniting factors for groups of artists. You know, you can go back to the Impressionists, you know, you can go back to any movement in art. And what was that initially? It was a group of artists who had common beliefs and trust within one another. And they put a show together because they had something to say. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really hoping that there's more exhibition opportunity driven programs, opportunities, like if you get a hold of a space, um, you know, I, I'm really hoping that that groups will begin showing together. Um, and then um, the last thing I, I think I kind of touched on this before, but, um, you know, when it comes to public funding for art projects, um, and when it comes to art projects that are, are in the public purview um, and, you know, the debate of whether it's all public art or it's art in public, you know, that, that's, that's a, a good conversation to have and, and think about, uh, but it, it shouldn't impede any project from moving forward, of course. Um, but I think when there is public monies available, um, I hope over the next few years we can develop um, some real curatorial vigor as we kind of curate the city. Um, and, you know, even if it's a public commission, we should get always get the best art that we can get for our city. Now, whether it's a local artist or an artist from the region or a national artist, I think we should always go for the best art that we can get and understand that, you know, even if we're not necessarily bringing in a local artist to lead the project, that there's huge amounts of opportunity for um, networking and professional development to have the local artists in the community here connect with those artists from outside the community who maybe, um, have have done more projects along these lines or on a larger scale have a little bit more experience it's great exposure and it's also a great way for Fitchburg to welcome in the larger community into its creative community conversation again i i think if we can also start moving away from pop up or one off projects um and and looking at sustainable programs and opportunities for artists and the creative community. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, th I think thinking about exhibition um, is, is a big, big thing because it builds audience. And that's really what the arts community requires is a robust audience. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, most of all, I wanna see downtown Fitchburg be above and beyond what the museum's already doing, you know, become a venue for art and culture from around the world. And again, I, I think it's really ripe. It, I think there's a lot of things in place that can happen. There's incredible partners in town. You know, I've talked about the museum. I have my background there, but 
you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Fitchburg State University and new, new communities and the city of Fitchburg itself um, and the Opportunity Council. And there, there's so many organizations pushing that needle um, that it's, it's very reassuring and it's, it's exciting to be a part of. Absolutely, I agree. Um, and yeah, those are some great ideas. I agree on all of those points. Um, I especially like your idea about, you know, you mentioned all of the sort of organizations and community partners that are pushing things forward, but you sort of highlighted the importance of artist run initiatives and um, things where artists themselves come together and don't need necessarily you know, a museum sponsorship or a gallery sponsorship, but ideas of like artist run spaces and um, things where the artists themselves are sort of running the project and seeing it through to execution, I think are so important and sustainability of um, the arts community is a huge thing as well. Yeah. So I totally agree. Yeah, in the in the two art spaces that I founded and run, um, they, they each had a lifespan of, of five years. Um, and one of the key components that made them successful was the complete buy-in, understanding, and partnership with the property owner themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that is is very difficult um, in the downtown area. The conditions of spaces make it um, very challenging to have them become accessible to the public for these types of things. I'm just going to add one other thing I'd like to see um, is, you know, s some real creative initiative put around how we can get some of those storefronts up and running. I know you mentioned earlier about putting art in those storefronts. You know, there was the Rollstone Gallery and, you know, I was involved with it, you know, getting it an extra year before, you know, that what we wanted to do just wasn't possible. Um, you know, due to, to lack of funding. And um, there's got to be some way, though, mm -hmm. to build relationships with the property owners where they also understand and see the value. And even if it's a temporary situation, but having art and culture, granting them access to space, that's what will bring people downtown. That's what will build an audience. You know, whether it's the downtown festivals or, you know, it's it's even just, um, you know, setting up spaces for potential clients to lease them by making them look better, you know, with with art. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's so many different tangibles that art can make a difference with. Um, and so I hope that that is something that that changes because you got to bring in all these artists to BF Brown and we're going to need to have a lot of spaces for them to show and a lot of a lot of nooks and crannies for them to do their thing and um you know we're going to need room for them to grow and and blossom and um opportunities for them to you know exist and and integrate within into this community um so absolutely fingers crossed well, fingers crossed and that sounds like a really exciting future um that i hope um comes to fruition. And um, Eugene, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. I think you have definitely proven why art matters and why art matters specifically in Fitchburg. Um, so I really thank you for that. And um, thank you for your time today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you to the Fitchburg Art Museum and the entire creative community here in North Central Massachusetts.